Hello and welcome to a good question on SCP. This question can be also considered as a coffee question but I am not saying that it's a coffee question because um, it's pretty solvable and uh, it is having just one small trick. Many a times students have found it difficult and uh, sometimes even if they have solved or we have solved this question in the class but still they faltered because they could not uh, see the conclusion coming out, right? So I thought that I will take this question uh, for you guys. This is uh, question number six on page number uh, 61 in your book. So you can uh, see it from there as well. And this is an unsolved question and it's a good question to solve. And it's uh, not very lengthy, but still uh, you need to figure it out that how to solve this question. <clears throat> The premises say C wedge D implies E implies F, E implies E dot F uh, implies G, G implies uh, negation of H wedge double negation of H implies C dot H, therefore uh, C triple bar G. Now the, this question again you know the strategy, the strategy is that we will be assuming C and we have to reach G. So we will say that C implies G. Then we will be assuming G and we will create C. So G implies C will come. Then we will conjoin them. So C triple bar G will come. So this is the idea of uh, solving this question. And this is something which has been uh, explained to you before as well. And something which you know, uh, many of you have already tried questions on SCP. So you know that how to solve these questions and how to go for it and so on. So uh, it's going to be uh, a good task to do this question. Let us see how to do. One part of this question is simpler, I will say, or uh, you can say less complex. In fact, there is no complexity. Uh, the other part poses a little bit of challenge and that is what we need to understand. And it will also open up uh, your understanding that how to see something <clears throat> because that is going to be very important. Every time we are solving questions, this is the idea. Every time we are solving questions, every time we are taking up questions, these questions are teaching us smaller things about logic, some intricacies about logic, some complexities about logic, which we need to gather. Because the more you will gather these kind of things, the more you will be clear and uh, uh, your mind will be clear with the understanding of how logic works and how deductive logic especially works and what are the ways of problem solving because ultimately it is enhancing our skills of problem solving. So this is something which you should understand. Anyways, so let us try to solve this question. So as I told you that we will, okay, I will do it in this fashion that I will make a line here so that we can take the boat uh, on both the sides and I will take line number four here. So I am taking an assumption and the assumption is that I will take C as the assumption. So it is SCP assumption 1, fine. So I have taken C. So now on line number 5, I will be adding D to it because I want to enter this line. So this will be 4 addition. Okay. Line number 6. This will be E implies F. So I will get it from first and fifth modus ponens, right? Okay. Now here you can see that from here we cannot enter this line, right? But then you can see that if I take E and create E implies F, so I can reach G. That is the idea. So I need to take another assumption now. So what will be my second assumption? The second assumption here will be E. I am taking another assumption. This is SCP assumption 2. Okay. Now on line number 8, look, this loop is open. So I can use all these premises here. I can use all these premises here. Okay. Up to here, there is no closure. So I can use all the lines. So with E, if I use uh, this line number, so I will get F, right? This is 6. 7 mode exponents. <clears throat> Fine. So it's clear. Now I can make this thing, right? On line number 9, I'm making it E dot F. So this is 7, 8 conjunction. Fine. 
Now I have got my desired result, so I will put a closure. Line number 10, E implies E dot F. So this will be from 7 to 9 SCP. Okay, so now you can see that I have created this part and my this part is closed now. Okay, so from here if you see this part is completely closed. So I cannot use these things. So I can use things because in this loop I can use these three steps, I can use this step. Okay, I can use these steps but I cannot use these three steps. Okay, fine. So no problem. I will not be using these steps. So E implies E dot F has come. So I have got this line. Okay. So on line number 11, with this and this, I will get G. This is like uh, 2, 10 modus ponens. Right? So I will put a closure now. And on line number 12, I will say C implies G because from C, I have derived G. So this will be 4 to 11 SCP. Okay. So one part of the question is over. Now we need to think about the second part. The second part requires a little bit of more working. Okay. You will understand. So one part is over. C implies G. Now the second part uh, is something which we have to do and that is that we have to create C from G. So our assumption should be, so I am taking line number 13 here. My assumption is G. So this is SCP assumption 3. Okay. Okay. Line number 14. With G, I will get this line. Negation of H veg double negation h uh, implies c dot h right so this i will get this is from 3 13 3 13 mp right okay line number 15 now the problem starts from here the students find it difficult to solve it that how to reach this line because this line does not seem very natural for us to understand that how to create this line okay and this is the part where students have always faced the problem so uh, what can be the understanding let's try to understand what is this negation of h wedge double negation of h right because if i can create this line then i will get c dot h Right? Because if I create this part, so with mode exponents, I will get C dot H. And from here, I can simplify C. So my G implies C will come. That is the idea. But what is the assumption which I should take? And how to create this? Now, this is the, um, this is initially the challenge. Because later on, you will understand these are peanuts. But right now, it is the challenge. So how to create this? This is the idea. <clears throat> now, let us closely watch this. What is negation of H wedge double negation of H? I'm just doing a rough work for you here. Huh? Uh, negation of H wedge double negation H. If I apply uh, material implication, what it will become? H implies double negation H. Fine. Okay. What does it mean? If I assume H and I create double negation H, so I can put a closure and write H implies double negation H and from there I will get negation of H dredge double negation H. This is the idea. And can you see this H is nothing but double negation of H, right? Because this and this is equivalent expression. So I just need to assume this. I will write on the next step this and from there I will get this and this my this line will be over. So this is something which you need to think because Initially, you do not see these things, right? Because logic is not uh, something which is very natural. Or at least most of the people will find it not very natural. Some people may be there in this world who will find logic to be very natural. They think in a very logical fashion always and every time. But usually we are bounded by emotions. Usually we are bounded by certain other things, not logic. So that is the idea. But then you can train yourself to become logical. That is the idea. So. Let us now do this because if you have understood this, I will do it for you as well in this question that how to solve this part. 
Now, my next assumption is I will take H as the next assumption. So it is SCP assumption 4. Okay. So on 16, I will write it as double negation H, right? Because uh, I can write it uh, on 15, I have applied double negation. Pretty simple. On 17, I, I will put the closure here only. I will write H implies double negation H. So this is from 15 to 16 SCP. On line number 18, what I will do? I will make it H, negation of H, wedge double negation H. This will be 17 material implication. So you can see that I have created this line, right? So on line number 19, what will come? It will come as C dot H because I am applying on 14 and 18 modus ponens, right? So I've got C dot H on 20. I will simplify. On 19, I have applied simplification. So I am getting C. So this has made my work or has completed my work. So on 21, I will write G implies C. This is from 13 to 20 SCP. Fine. Now I have created C implies G on line number uh, 12. I have created G implies C on line number 21. So what I need to do? I need to conjoin them. On 22, C implies G dot G implies C. So this will be 12, 21 conjunction. Fine. So on 23rd step, C triple bar G comes out. Right. So you see that this question, even if it looked a little bit difficult here at this part, but it is pretty solvable. And therefore I said that it is a half coffee question or it's not a coffee question as such, but students have found it difficult to solve it here because usually this is the thing which does not clearly comes out. And <clears throat> in the next part of the uh, syllabus, when we will be solving a lot of proving uh, or uh, we will be proving a lot of identities like uh, De Morgan's law, like uh, distribution, like um, material implication, double negation, all these things, all these rules of replacements can be solved. So you will see that you have to start thinking that how some assumption needs to be taken and how a conclusion needs to be created so that the assumption implies conclusion is the answer which you are requiring in that question, right? So that is the idea of uh, doing these things. And SCP, as I told you, is the strongest tool because uh, in SCP, everything subsumes, right? Indirect proof subsumes, the old uh, conditional proof also because as I told you that the, this SCP in many books will be called as CP only, uh, only conditional proof only. So uh, all these things will be subsumed in this understanding. So once you are very strong with the understanding of SCP, I can tell you, I can give you in writing as well, that nothing will come between you and this course on logic because you will be very well versed with that and you can solve it to perfection. So um, take more questions, practice more uh, questions and you will see that your uh, practice and your taking more questions is actually enhancing your skills in logic. Thanks.